Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to singing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him. From care he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he cares for me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow. Again, we're going, to, uh, we're going to reset ourselves in the book of Romans this morning, and uh, I just welcome our guests uh, this morning. And uh, what we believe here at First Baptist Church Howard is we believe in the power of the Word of God, and that's why we go through the Scriptures from Genesis to the book of Revelation, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and this morning we find ourselves back into the book of Romans, uh, chapter 15. So if you have your Bibles or the Pew Bible... Uh, Romans chapter 15, we're going to pick up in verse 14 this morning. With a message I entitled, Praise and Prayer. Romans chapter 15, we're going to pick up in verse 14, if you would stand with me to honor the Word of God. Picking up in verse 14. Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you on some points, 
as reminding you, because of the grace given to me by God, that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we once again, Lord, thank you for the word of God. And as we go through the word of God, I pray, Lord, that the word of God would go through us. And we pray, Lord, that your spirit would give us ears to hear what you have to say to the church this morning. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, it's, it's been a few weeks since we've found ourselves in the book of Romans. We had, you know, a break with Pastor Jay, and then we had the, the youth Sunday with David. We looked at David. And if, if you recall, just to recap a little bit, what did we already see in the book of Romans? We saw 11 chapters of this solid doctrinal teaching of what we are to believe. And then we, it was followed up with four chapters of this very practical application of how Christians are to basically just behave and to operate in this world. And tonight or today, we come upon basically the end part. Many people have called this the epilogue to the book of Romans. Now, if you're familiar with an epilogue, an epilogue basically ties up the loose ends and it brings the, the piece of literature to a conclusion. And it's generally very personal and it's written from the author's personal vantage point. And what we're going to see this morning is we're going to get a, a glimpse into Paul the Apostle's heart for ministry. We're going to see his goals, we're going to see his aspirations, and we're going to see his, uh, his even fears, okay? And it basically takes two forms, his praises and his prayers. Very much like we, what we just did at the very beginning of the service. Do we have praises? Yes. Do we have prayers? Yes. And that's exactly what you're going to see as the Apostle Paul pens out this epilogue, as we get a look into the shepherd's heart. It's as if, for a moment, if you, if you think about it like this, he takes the pastor's pen for a moment and he puts it down. And he pulls up a chair and he gets a cup of coffee and he starts to talk to us like friends. This very just personal one-on-one -on -one conversation as he shares with us as a friend his dreams, his fears, and his goals. And it's always good to have goals in life, right? Whether they're financial goals, fitness goals, academic goals, and even goals within the ministry. So let's begin, first of all, this morning, as we look at two things, the praises of Paul and the prayer of Paul. Look, let's look at his praises first. And that's really the, the most extensive part of this. Verse 14, he says, Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you are also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you on some points, as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God. The first thing the Apostle Paul does here in the epilogue is he praises the church in Rome for their character. Remember where we left off. A chapter and a half, he was talking about unity within the body of Christ. And now he says this, I am confident in you that you are full of goodness. Goodness. What is goodness? Goodness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, and it means to, this moral, ethical purity. Uh, we were studying Job in Sunday school, and I'm studying Job personally in my life. And when you look at the life of Job, the, this is what it says about Job. He feared God, and he shunned evil. Oh, for men and women today to fear God and to shun evil. This is this idea of goodness. And he says, this goodness was overflowing. Think about like a Coca-Cola, you know, all the, all the foam is just like... Bleh. These people were overflowing with goodness. But secondly, he says, they were filled with knowledge. That, what does that mean? That means these people in, in the Church of Rome, 
They were doctrinally sound. They were like the Bereans in the book of Acts. Remember the Bereans? They said that Paul said about them, he said, they searched the scriptures daily to see if what I said was true. And that's what we should be doing. Whatever comes from this pulpit, whatever you see on the television, whatever Bible study that you listen to on the radio, you need to check it against the Word. We need to be Bereans. We need to be filled with the knowledge of the Word of God. This word knowledge, it's not just head knowledge. This was a knowledge that actually was taken in and it, it came forth in their actions. And friends, what you see in churches today, some of the crazy things that are happening, I mean, you go, if you Google these things online, I mean, you don't even have to Google and they're just on your television. You see these weird things popping up, fire tunnels and people just laughing hysterically and it's just these very weird things. Where does all this come from? It comes from Satan, but it comes also from a lack of knowledge. It comes from a lack of understanding what the Word of God says. Friends, that's why we do what we do here. This is why we belabor, you know, Romans and 1 Peter and Zechariah and the Bible. This is what we do because I don't want to be up here, friends, giving you what they call a, sky, a skyscraper sermon. Do you guys know what a skyscraper sermon is? A skyscraper sermon is when someone comes up here and all they do is tell a story upon a story upon a story upon a story. I want to give you guys the Word of God. Amen. And that is where the growth comes in. That's where goodness comes in. And that's where you become filled with knowledge. He praises them, first of all, for their character. The second thing he praises them for is their counsel. He says they're, they're able to admonish one another. Okay, Paul Never laid foot in the church at Rome at this point. But he heard, hey, this church, they admonish one another. What a blessing it is to come into a body and be able to be admonished. I mean, last week after service, I was talking to a, a man by the name of Travis. And we were just talking about ministry. We were talking about uh, faith. We were talking about Christ. And man, what were we doing? We were just really admonishing one another. That's what was happening. I was being encouraged. Hopefully he was being encouraged. That's what it was. And friends, that's what you want to receive when you come into the body. You want to be admonished with the word of God in the fellowship of the saints. Friends, these people were overflowing with goodness. They were filled with knowledge. They were able to admonish one another. What would the Apostle Paul hear about First Baptist Church of Howard? What would the report be back to him? Would it be, hey, First Baptist Church of Howard is full of goodness. First Baptist Church of Howard, they're filled with knowledge. They're doctrinally sound. They're able to admonish one another. That's my prayer for this body. That that's what, who, would, who would we would be. And hopefully that's your prayer for one another. But in the midst of the, this commendation here, he says in verse 15, he says, I'm reminding you of these things. And friends, that's what a shepherd's role really is. It's to remind you of things. It's to remind you of the goodness of God. It's to remind you that God has a plan for your life. It's to remind you that Jesus is coming again. It's to remind you that of what sin is and what right is and what wrong is. And friends, he said, it's not a bother for me to remind you of these things. And people come to me and say, why, why is everything so repetitive in the Bible? You know, the Lord seems to repeat himself a lot. It's because we are prone to repeat the same mistakes over and over. And that's why the Lord repeats himself over and over again. How many of you with children know this to be true? How many of you ever said to your children, how many times do I have to tell you? And I can guarantee you it's more than once. <laughs> Right? <laughs> and that's what the Lord does. He, he instructs us. And this is what the Apostle Paul is doing. He's, he's reminding us over and over again of these basic, wonderful truths. So he praises them for their character, their counsel. And now he starts to look at these personal qualities of his ministry. So th what are the qualities of Paul's ministry? He says, first of all, this ministry of his was, number one, it was personal. Look at verse 16. He says, That I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. 
ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Paul says, look, I'm not simply just preaching to you salvation messages. I'm instructing you. Gentiles are being converted, and that's what I'm going to glory in, the work that God is doing among the Gentiles. And listen carefully, friends. This is how Paul viewed the ministry. The language is very much Old Testament language, and he views it as his priestly duty. He says there that those he instructs, he views them as an offering to God. I'm going to say that again. He views his ministry as an offering to Almighty God, as a priest would offer a sacrifice. Friends, this wasn't a way for the Apostle Paul just to pay his bills. This wasn't just a way to have a position. Amen. Friends, this was an offering to God. And it's so funny, the people that he's presenting as an offering to God, at one point in his life, he hated. He actually was persecuting and killing. And now he says, these people are coming to Christ and I'm presenting them to you as an offering. How do we view our ministry? Dads, moms, grandmas, grandpas, how do you view your ministry in the home? To your children, to your wife, to your husband. Do you view it as an offering unto God? Or is it a duty? Is it an obligation? Something I have to do? How about when you go to work in the morning? How do you view that? So I have to do it? Or is it a a sweet offering to God. It changes everything, friends. How do, how do we view what happens here in this church? Is it just something that we know put out there? Something that we feel that we have to do? Or is it an offering to God? Friends, our goal, our heart should be as His heart. His heart was to please the heart of God. And that is one of the greatest motivators ever. Whether it's your family whether that's your job, whether that's your service in the, in the body of Christ, it is to please the heart of God. And friends, I really believe that's what happened here last night. It was to bless the heart of our Savior. That's what it's about. So it was personal to him. And friends, someone said to me one time, they said, if you can't preach with passion, you shouldn't be preaching. Friends, this is what, again, if you can't do something with passion, why do it at all? It was personal. It's not, it's not a thing to do. It was personal to him. The second thing was it was a powerful ministry. Look at verse 17. Therefore I have reason to glory in Christ Jesus in the things which pertain to God. For I will dare not speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. So that from Jerusalem around about to Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom was he was not announced, they shall see. And those who have not heard shall understand. Now imagine again, Paul taking a sip of coffee, putting the coffee down. And saying, you know what, guys? I want to praise you as well for the powerful work of the Spirit of God among you. Friends, he said, I don't want to praise my work. I want to praise the work that God is doing through me. He says, the only thing that I want to boast in is what God is doing through me. And before I had the COVID thing, I was at Poplar Pizza, right? Order a pizza. There I am. And evidently it was a, one of those seafood boil days and I didn't know about it. So, you know, there's a line, right? And standing in line, you know, you talk to people and you hear a lot of conversations going on. And what I realized, just listening to conversation, how boastful people are, right? And I mean, I'm guilty, I'm this, I'm guilty just as much as anybody else, but Think about most of the conversation. Most of the conversation was this. 
what I did, what I accomplished, what I got into, or what I used to be. Friends, it was all about what they did. Paul says, no. He says, Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, he says, I will not boast in anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. He would say to the Corinthians, I have determined to know nothing except Christ crucified. Friends, and Paul, he could have boasted greatly. He had pedigrees, degrees, you know, he had the bloodline, he had everything. He could have boasted about anything, but he said, you know what he came to realize in his life? He said, the only thing that matters to me is the cross of Jesus Christ because it was through the cross that it changed Paul's life. And listen to these words. I love these words of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians because often we think of Paul, this, this super giant of faith, and he was to a degree. But listen to how he describes himself in Corinthians. He says, I did not come to you with eloquent, eloquent words and high philosophy. I came to you weak, fearful, trembling, so that you would know that this is the demonstration of the power of the Spirit. He said, I came to you fearful, weak, trembling, so you would know that this was a work of Almighty God. This wasn't something that was done in my own strength. This was a work of the Spirit. And Jeremiah chapter 9 says the same thing. He says, the rich man boasts in his wealth, the wise man boasts in his intelligence. You know, the strong man boasts in his might. He says, if you glory in anything, he said, glory in this, that you understand and know me. In this, I delight. He says, if you want to boast in anything, boast that you know the Lord. He says, that's what you should be boasting in. And he says, this ministry of his was marked by mighty signs and wonders. And it was. If you look through the book of Acts, there were many miracles that were happening. You know, his sweatbands that he had, people were being healed. I mean, this was a powerful ministry. But here's the thing about the miracles in the book of Acts. The miracles were not the end all, okay? The miracles were a platform for the gospel to go out, friends. And this is the ministry that Paul is talking about. He said, listen, the ministry that I have, it was personal to me. It was powerful. And thirdly, he says, it was growing. He says there, from Illyricum to Jerusalem. That's like saying from Jerusalem to Yugoslavia, like 1,400 miles. He says, look what the Lord is doing among the people. It is growing. Why? Because the Apostle Paul was a man who was yielded 100% to Almighty God. D.L. Moody said this. He said, the world has yet to see what God can do with a man who is fully consecrated to him. By God's help, I aim to be that man. Friends, don't underestimate what God can do with your life when you are fully sold out for him. You know, I hear people say a lot, you know, it's just little old me or I don't have much to offer. You know, I'm from this area. It doesn't matter if your heart is fully dedicated to God, He can do amazing things through your life. Again, it has to come down. Again, second week in a row, it comes down to this. Is your heart fully surrendered to Him? So Paul says, look, these are the qualities of the ministry. You know, they was powerful. It was personal. It was growing. And now he says, look, here's the purpose of the ministry. Verse 22. For this reason, I, have also, I also have been much hindered from coming to you, but now no longer having a place in these parts and having a great desire these many years to come to you. Whenever I journey to Spain, I shall come to you. For I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you, if first I may enjoy your company for a while. But now I am going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. For it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. It pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. For if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister to them in material things. Therefore, when I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I shall go by way of you to Spain. 
But I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. And if you back up this there to verse 20 to 21, what was his all-consuming passion? His all-consuming passion was to take the gospel to unreached places. And friends, that's simply the goal of ministry today. That's one goal of ministry, to take the gospel to unreached places. Oftentimes we complicate this. It's to take the gospel to those who have not heard. And we see here, he had a goal to make it to Rome, okay? But if you look in verse 22 there, it says there in verse 22, he was much hindered, much hindered. Anybody in the congregation here today, you know about hindrances? Yeah, amen? Paul had much, he was much hindered. He had people like the Judaizers when he would plant a church. These Judaizers would come in and they would come in and undermine the work Paul did and said, you know, it's wonderful that you're saved by grace, but he forgot to tell you a couple things. You got to follow this dietary law. You got to get circumcised. And they put these humongous burdens on people. He had the Judaizers. He had physical ailments, you know. He had these physical ailments things that he struggled with. He had the thorn in the flesh, whatever you want to think that is. Maybe that was a person that was sent to Paul just to aggravate and torment this man. But either way, he had hindrances. And even, even God hindered Paul. Remember in the book of Acts, he wanted to go up this way. I believe it was into the area of uh, Turkey. And God said, no, I'm closing that door. He didn't give him a reason. He just closed that door. And again, Paul was not allowed to go into that area. And friends, what I want to communicate to you this morning is this. Whatever ministry, whatever work of God that is happening in your life, it's going to be hindered by something or by someone. That can even mean your own family members. What are you doing talking about Jesus. What are you doing going to church? What are you doing, you know, serving in that area? Why are you always at that church? You're being hindered. There are going to be people hindering you, friends. Even church folks can hinder the ministry. What are you, you know, just creating this static and this controversy? Hindrances. But I always say this about hindrances. When you receive opposition, it's verification you're doing the right thing. Because if you don't have any opposition, it means the enemy's not worried about it. But the hindrances are showing you that is you're doing the right thing. And friends, it's not easy, but Paul was hindered. You're going to be hindered. And he had plans for the future, right? He wanted to get to Rome. And again, goals are good. But here's the question. Are we flexible to God changing our goals? And this is the question I really want you guys to think about this morning. Here's the the question. Are you open to God rewriting your story for your good and His glory? Are you open to God rewriting your story for your good and His glory? What do you mean by that, Pastor? What I mean by that is this. We have goals. We have aspirations. We have dreams. We think, you know, this is how life is going to go. Would you be open if the Lord burdened your heart today? It said, you know what? I want you to go to the border. I want you to minister to those people. What if he burdened your heart this morning? I said, I want you to go to Russia. Would you be flexible? Would you be open to God rewriting your story? Would you be willing to go to New York City or go to California? Plans are good, but are you willing to be flexible and open as God opens doors and puts burdens on your heart? Would you be willing to part with things. In Luke chapter 9, it's a very personal passage to me because before I left Harrisburg, the Lord impressed it upon my heart 
And in Luke chapter 9, there's a couple people talking to Jesus. And Jesus said these words. He said, follow me. Follow me. And these men and women said, no, I got to go bury my father. Okay. No, I got to go take care of this. And Jesus said, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And then he said these words. He said, you go preach the gospel. Friends, that's what I'm asking you today. Would you be willing, if God put it on your heart, to stay flexible to your plans? So we see Paul talking about his ministry, talking about these hindrances, but we also see something else about the heart of Paul. He was a man of prior prior commitment. In verse 26, he talks about a contribution. He, was, he wanted to go to Rome, but there was this contribution that he had to take back to the poverty-stricken church in Jerusalem. And again, folks, this is what ministry is. It's about preaching the gospel. It's about serving the less fortunate. It's about watching the character of Christ be developed through the work of the Spirit. So here's the praise report. Think about the Apostle Paul up here. He says, I want to praise you for your character. I want to praise you for your counsel, and I want to praise the quality of the ministry. That's his praise report. Now he goes to the prayer. Very short prayer, but Paul was a man of prayer. Verse 30, thir, ver, or sorry, verse 30. Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you may strive together with me in prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints." that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. So now Paul moves into his prayer request and he says, look, he knew he needed prayer to keep going. And he was not too proud to ask for prayer. And he basically, three short requests. First request, he says, I need protection. I need protection. Verse 31, he says, um, to be delivered from those in Judea. Paul was a very beloved man, but Paul had many, many enemies. Remember in the book of Acts, they were continuing to tell Paul, Paul, if you go there, they're going to kill you. If you go there, they're going to stone you. A man by the name of Agabus, Paul, they're going to bind you and they're just going to, they're going to, they're going to take you, Paul. And Paul says, I need protection from these people. He asked for protection. But here's the thing. You look at the book of Acts. Look at Paul's life as he talks about it in Corinthians uh, chapter 11. He was beaten. He was stoned. He was beaten to the point of death, but he lived. So the question is, was the prayer answered? He lived. Second request. He said the offering would be acceptable. Paul does make it back there. He does give them the offering. It was received, probably not the way he wanted, though. The red carpet, probably not rolled out. They didn't put him up on a pedestal somewhere, but they did receive it. Again, answered, but probably not the way he thought it would be. Third request, safe travels. He said, Paul said, I want to get to Rome, and he will get to Rome. But here's the thing about this. He's not going to get to Rome as a preacher, He's going to go to Rome as a prisoner. And here's the thing. As he appeals to uh, Agrippa, he gets a, uh, able, he's able to go into Caesar's court. And he says, I found myself in Caesar's house. And here's the thing. In Philippians 1.12, he says, these things happened to advance the gospel. He didn't go as a pastor. He went as a prisoner. And because he went as a prisoner... It opened doors to him that would not be normally available to him as a pastor. He had opportunity to minister in Caesar's household to the guards. And friends, today, think about that for a moment. You may work in Caesar's house. Do you know what I mean by that? You may work among 90% you know, pagan, unchristian. They don't go to church. You're in Caesar's house so to speak. But God may have placed you there to minister to those people. Again, 
He opened, <clears throat> excuse me, he opened a door that would no, not normally have been opened to him because he went as a prisoner. Again, did God answer the prayer? Yeah, but not in the way Paul thought. How many times have you and I prayed and prayed and prayed and heaven has seemed silent? Or we think, the Lord is going to do this and he doesn't. And what can happen? We can become disillusioned, we can become discouraged, or we can trust in him and we can know that his ways are best. And friends, when we get to heaven, I think we're going to be surprised and we're going to be very thankful at the prayers that God did not answer the way we wanted him to answer. And we're going to say, oh, I see what you are doing now, Lord. And I want to conclude with this prayer. I love this prayer. It's from an anonymous individual, and it says this. I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn to humbly obey. I asked God for health that I might do great things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked God for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing I asked for, but everything that I hoped for. And friends, in Jesus Christ, we have everything that we've hoped for. Amen. The things that this world cannot take away, the things that this war cannot take away. Friends, whatever your prayer is, remember, friends, we have everything that we need in Jesus Christ. And as we sing this invitation, is your name written there? As the musicians come forward, I'm going to just end with this question. This song is about, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? And that book is going to be open at the